Do you know that NASA explores not only stars, planets, galaxies, or black holes? Hard to believe, but yes. The agency also works on discoveries here on our home planet Earth. So what has NASA recently discovered? Is there life under the ice? While they were analyzing data recently, they discovered something unbelievable hiding under Antarctica's ice. And this discovery not only changes everything we know about the whole water system of the Earth, but it may also help with research about life in space. Humankind's existence might depend on understanding Antarctica and its secrets. So, the recent discoveries reveal vital information about our survival. But before we continue, let's see how much you know about this place, where it's only ice as far as your eyes can see. Antarctica is one of the world's seven continents in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the fifth largest continent in terms of total area, and that means it's almost twice the size of Australia. Want to see real meteorites? Go to Antarctica! Due to its dry climate, Antarctica is one of the best places to observe space. But what's even greater is that you can find meteorites on the white surface of the continent. Scientists have already plucked about 45,000 meteorites from the ice, and they think they can see another 300,000. Since there aren't many terrestrial rocks there, it's easy for them to spot them thanks to their dark color. Antarctica's dry desert environment also helps preserve them, even the ones that fell to Earth more than one million years ago. And can you imagine any volcanic activity in Antarctica? It's hard. But this place is where fire meets the ice. West Antarctica is where most volcanic activity occurs. Scientists recently found that 138 volcanoes exist in West Antarctica alone. Wow! You would think that Antarctica is always cold, but no. Its coastal regions can get as warm as 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But have you ever wondered what Antarctica would look like if there were no ice? It may seem unimaginable now, but it was not always covered by ice. That was 34 million years ago, though, so nobody could tell how the continent's surface would be without the ice. But NASA changed that. They generated computer simulations and created the most accurate map of it as of today. What they saw was incredible. The continent was not flat at all, like it seemed. It's pretty bumpy with valleys, rolling plains, and high mountains. But this was nothing next to what they had discovered under Antarctica's ice. So, what is it? Drum roll, please. NASA found two new subglacial lakes. And what's even cooler about it is that they spotted these lakes from space. How is that? If your answer is high-tech satellites, then you're right. In 2003, NASA launched a satellite called IceSat. It measured ice sheet mass balance and cloud and aerosol heights. The satellite also helped create the ice-free map of Antarctica. In 2010, the European Space Agency launched the second satellite, Cryosat-2. It was for tracking the changes in the thickness of the ice. Then, in 2018, NASA launched the third one, IceSat-2, a follow-on to the IceSat spacecraft. It measured ice sheet elevation and sea ice thickness. It was NASA's most advanced Earth-observing laser instrument. It delivered the highest precision data. And when that was combined with the data from the other satellites, it was possible to spot these two new lakes near a pair of larger ones. But how is it possible that these lakes exist in the first place? The average thickness of most Antarctica ice is approximately 1.2 miles. However, it can get over 1.8 miles thick in some places, especially during the winter. So, you might think that there's nothing under there, but science says otherwise. It's not quite possible to see it with your bare eyes, but the continent's ice is slowly but constantly flowing in different directions under the force of its weight. But scientists could not figure out how water moved for many years. That started to change in 2007, when data gathered from the ice sat provided insight into what hides beneath the surface. 
they first discovered an entire network of meltwater lakes connected under Antarctica's fast-flowing ice streams. And there were hundreds of them. Scripps Institution of Oceanography glaciologist Helen Amanda Fricker figured that the elevation changes measured by ICESAT happened because of the dynamics of these lakes. They did not hold meltwater statically. Instead, they were filling and draining continuously over time through a system of waterways. And as they did that, the ice above rose and fell. But where do they drain? The ocean, of course, and it drains a lot. A recent study, co-authored by Fricker, found that the drainage of one lake flushed as much as 198 billion gallons into the ocean in only three days. Countless mysteries about how nature works are still waiting to be solved. But finding the two new lakes will give scientists a better picture of how fast the Antarctic ice sheet will change as the climate gets warmer and how this will affect global ocean currents and sea level rise. The filling and draining cycle of the lakes also caused the ice sheet to suffer cracks and crevices. So, the information they find from these new lakes will also give them a better understanding of the damage on the surface of the ice. They will also be able to assess how this filling and draining system influences the speed at which ice slips into the oceans and seas. And that means they can evaluate how the added freshwater may alter marine ecosystems. This discovery may also suggest whether life is under the ice. Wow! Scientists drilled through about 3,504 feet of ice and found that water samples taken from one of the lakes contained approximately 10,000 bacterial cells per milliliter. Such a high number of bacterial life is a good sign because that means the icy waters might also support higher life forms, such as microanimals, and one of these new lakes might even be their home. But the most exciting thing is that the new lakes might help them understand whether life on other planets is possible. Scientists believe any life below the frozen surface of the planet Mars might follow the patterns seen in Antarctica's lakes. So, there is a possibility that they might find critical new information on the type of life that may have existed on the red planet. You wouldn't want to be there during the winter, though. The lowest temperature on Earth you can experience is negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit. In 2010, there was an even lower temperature of negative 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And you may feel this cold much worse due to the strong and dry winds. Did you know that the size of the ice surface on Antarctica also changes throughout the year? It's about 1.2 million square miles during the summer. But when it's winter, it grows to 7.3 million square miles. Yet, despite the change, it remains the largest piece of ice on Earth. Sorry, Arctic, you lose. Do you know these cute little penguins? Consider these animals the locals, because there is no native population in Antarctica. It's a no-man's land, because no single country owns it. But do you know who really owns it? Five different species of penguins, seals, and killer whales. Ha ha. Despite the continent's harsh conditions, you can visit it as a tourist for fishing and research purposes. Around 5,000 people reside on the continent during summer at research stations. But when winter comes, the number naturally drops down to 1,000. Antarctica's ice blanket makes up 70% of the world's freshwater reserves. Imagine what would happen if it melted. The global sea levels would be raised by almost 200 feet. A colossal iceberg, more giant than a city, broke away from Antarctica in mid-2021. It's so big that it's 40 times bigger than Paris and 73 times the size of Manhattan. Imagine that you come out of your small holiday shack on the coast of South Africa, near the town of Port Elizabeth. You have a cup of tea in your hand as you've just woken up. You stand near the edge of your lookout, the vast Indian Ocean before you. Something catches your eye. To the right, there is something so monumental, you can't comprehend it. It's a giant slab of ice, 300 feet high, and stretching away many miles, as far as the eye can see. It rolls slowly, but relentlessly on, heading out into the deep sea. If it goes far enough, it could reach the western coast of Australia. Playing in front of it are a pod of dolphins, like they sometimes do off the bow of a ship. 
Yet they're just specks compared to the mammoth size. You're so shocked that you drop your cup. Your eyes are as big as saucers. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. Are you dreaming? Are you seeing things? Nope. It's A76. It's real, and it's currently on the move. What could happen to it is anyone's guess. Well, scientists have a few theories, but let's get a grasp of its size first. The iceberg is 110 miles long and 16 miles wide. It's basically the shape of a gigantic finger. If you were standing at the coast of Dover, looking across the English Channel toward France, the iceberg would be almost as wide. The channel is 21 miles across at its narrowest. That means approximately two-thirds of that distance would be filled with the iceberg. That's if it were drifting, finger pointing down, so to speak. If it were facing the other way, it could still enter the English Channel. But as it got closer to the narrowest points, it would smash into the coasts of both England and France. It would go up over land. It would slide over the green fields of England, the white ice bold against the rich green. It would cruise past the vineyards of France. It was temporarily lowering the temperature of everything around it. Those grapes would be like jelly crystals. It would skim right over highways, cars stopping to observe this colossal thing like a visitor from another galaxy. You could pluck chunks off it for your drink as it sailed past. Failing that, you could scale it and go ice climbing, right on the outskirts of London. It would certainly be handy in the summer. But let's get back to what actually happened and what scientists think will happen to it. As of the beginning of 2022, A76 is the world's most giant floating iceberg. It was calved from the Filchner Ron Ice Shelf in Antarctica in the middle of May 2021. Ice calving, also known as glacier calving, is the breaking up of ice chunks from the edge of a glacier. It then pulls away from the ice mass into a separate entity. If you were nearby, you would hear a lot of cracking and a massive booming sound. Blocks of ice up to 200 feet would break free and crash into the water. It would cause huge waves. Not even adventurous surfers would want to tackle those breakers. Ice calving is a natural event. The area where A76 broke off has seen little change in recent decades. There have been even larger chunks of ice than A76, but this one is currently the largest in the world. Scientists at the British Antarctic Survey spotted it. There are satellite images of it breaking free, as captured by the European Space Agency's Sentinel-1A satellite. The size at the calving was an estimated 1,670 square miles. Right now, it's in the Weddell Sea around Antarctica. The Weddell Sea is part of the Southern Ocean. It was named after the Scottish sailor, James Weddell, who entered the area in 1823. Scientists have deemed the Weddell Sea to have the clearest water of any sea. Imagine peering down into its depths from a boat. What a fantastic view it must be. The area is full of whales and seals. As you look down, you may see killer whales, humpback whales, minke whales, leopard seals, and crab eater seals. And if you look towards land, you'll likely see a colony of Adelie penguins. They're the dominant penguin species in this area because they adapt to the harsh environment. In fact, this is the only location in the world they live. What an incredible array of wildlife to observe, all from the comfort of the ship's deck, while you drink another cup of hot tea. It gets pretty cold in these parts. To get an idea of what could happen to A76, scientists refer to other data, such as the even more enormous iceberg called A68. It was calved from the ice shelf known as Larsen Sea off Antarctica in 2017. While it may be exciting, Though a little daunting to think of it also sailing up the English Channel, A68 floated out to warmer seas and, by early 2021, had all but dissipated. That was a relatively quick demise. Some icebergs have been observed floating around for up to 18 years. Suppose they remain in the relatively cold waters. It all depends on where A76 decides to go. Satellites have helped scientists keep track of these monstrous movements, whereas they would go unnoticed in the past. That's how they know that by day 148, this iceberg had split into three fragments, imaginatively titled A76A, A76B, and A76C. The numbers might be boring, but they're based on the Antarctic quadrant in which they were first sighted. If these enormous chunks do break up entirely, it will not add to rising sea levels because it was already part of the floating ice shelf. 
Imagine these ice chunks in your glass. They already take up a certain amount of space. They will simply change form into water. Icebergs like this one are different from glaciers or ice sheets found on land. Those are the things that help to raise sea levels when they break off and melt. For example, if the whole of Antarctica's ice sheet were to melt, it could raise sea levels by nearly 190 feet. If you think A76 is enormous, and it clearly is, there was another that makes it look small in comparison. On record, the largest iceberg was sighted in November of 1956, 150 miles west of Scott Island in the South Pacific Ocean. Ironically, it was seen by a ship known as the USS Glacier. It was sized over 12,000 square miles. This iceberg was larger than the country of Belgium. What may happen to the chunks of A76 will depend on a few factors. Ocean currents can make a significant impact, and wind direction and speed can too. They may move closer to coastlines, where they can freeze into pack ice. They can also drift into shallow waters and hit the seabed, called seabed gouging. The deepest part of the iceberg can act like the keel of a boat. It digs into the ocean floor, but the sheer size of the iceberg keeps it moving. Soon it's tearing up the floor, creating a long, narrow furrow or a gouge. Fish would scatter, the earth would shake, the noise would be tremendous. It's actually quite common in offshore environments near where ice is found. You would not want to be scuba diving nearby when one of these rips through. However, it would make for a spectacular sight. Generally, icebergs deteriorate through melting and fracturing, which, as you can imagine, changes the mass and the surface area. Combined with wind and ocean currents, it can make iceberg modeling difficult. As for A76, we'll just have to wait and see. Before we go, let's return to our imaginary voyage down the English Channel. The Island of Ice, 73 times the size of Manhattan, with its gigantic frosty finger pointed down toward the Celtic Sea, rolling steadily onwards, unable to be stopped. Hundreds of thousands of people have flocked to the coasts of both England and France to watch this extraordinary spectacle as it cruises by. On top of the ice, there are thousands of penguins playing happily. They almost look to be waving back to the abundance of sightseers who cheer them on their way, the children jumping with joy at the most spectacular sight they've ever witnessed.